Greetings, Terrarians Chaos here. In the last episode of Terracore, I got a lot of Rod of Discords, and you all wanted to know how you too could get a lot of Rod of Discords. So today, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build this highly efficient, fully AFK farm. But first, I just wanted to quickly remind you that we still have plushies on sale. There are only four days left, and we will be having a giveaway live stream this Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, so I hope to see you all there. Now, straight into the farm, this thing is obviously going to produce a lot of rods of discords, but it's also going to produce a lot of other stuff, like a ton of apple pie and a bunch of platinum and gold. So it's a very, very good farm, and you could even edit it later when you no longer need rods of discord. Trust me, when you have 21 rods of discord, you don't need any more. <laughs> Maybe. Now, when it comes to building this AFK farm, location is key. Obviously, it needs to be in the hollow, which we can do artificially just by placing some blocks. But it also needs to be at cavern layer, and I recommend a specific part of the cavern layer. So I cleared out a big area here using T-Edit, and as we head underground, we're going to be able to see the difference. So right now, we are in the underground layer. You can tell because it looks mostly dirt. If we keep going right here, you can see the background changes to a more stone look. This is the underground versus the cavern. We have to be at this layer here to build the farm. Now, technically, this goes all the way down until the underworld and you get the lava background starting to pop up. I would not recommend going that far down because the further you are in the cavern layer, the more likely you are to get things like rune wizards or Tim, which will definitely make your farm a lot less efficient and a lot more dangerous. So what I would recommend doing is finding this line right here and then going about 50 blocks down and building your farm in that area. So I'm going to head back to spawn. We're going to find this location at spawn and we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so I've built the tunnel down from spawn and we have this line right here between the underground and the cavern. So I'm just going to go 50 blocks down really quick. And this is actually going to be our AFK spot for the farm. So you could go ahead and mark it off with any sort of block. I'm just going to put a couple of tin and copper plating here just so I remember that this is indeed my AFK spot. So up next, we need to create an area for the enemies to spawn in. We know we're going to be sitting AFK right in this very spot but we need to have an area for them to spawn and we need to make sure that they're not spawning anywhere else in the nearby vicinity. Now monsters can spawn within a certain area. Of this very spot here, they could spawn anywhere up to around 50 blocks high and 50 blocks low. So I'm going to either need to clear out an area below which is what I personally recommend doing, just digging out 50 blocks below and creating a nice big area of emptiness beneath the farm. Or you need to make sure that everything is completely filled in, 100%. Because if you don't fill in all of these little caves here with blocks, enemies will spawn in here and they'll make your farm far, far less efficient. So the best way to fill these in is to just take sticky dirt bombs and start placing them around and just filling the area in with dirt. However, it's very, very easy to miss stuff like this in the dark caverns. That's why I recommend the clearing out an area by digging method. Plus, since you're in survival anyway, you're going to get a lot of dirt and stone and other materials to build with. So it's a win-win in my opinion. So in this case, we're going to dig 50 blocks down. And then, once again, from this AFK spot, we're going to need to go at least 85 blocks to the left and 85 blocks to the right. 
So we're going to have 50 above, 50 below, 85 to the right, 85 to the left, and we need to clear out every single block within that area except for our AFK spot. It's going to take a bit of time, but trust me, it will take you a lot less time to build this farm than it will for you to try to get the Rod of Discord just by running around the hallow. Once you've dug out the area or filled in the area below with dirt, you should have a big gigantic box that goes 85 blocks to the left and i've just marked this wall off with this copper plating over here 50 blocks down 50 blocks up right to the line where the underground and the cavern meet and then 85 blocks to the right as well and we should have a big open area here so that way when we are sitting in the afk spot which is exactly right here nothing can spawn outside of the copper plating that i've done over here all of this all of these caverns these are out of range and you won't get any any enemies spawning in those areas which ensures that enemies will only be spawning within your farm as long as you are in this very spot so now that we have that we need to make an area for the enemies not only to spawn but an area for the enemies to fall in and die essentially so we're going to be creating a volcano shape a, a lava chamber of sorts and it's just going to be a simple row of blocks like this and of course you can use whatever blocks you want to um for appearance sake it's really up to you i'm just i like using tin and copper plating just because it looks industrial and farming feels industrial now we want this to be high enough that you cannot jump out of it and the reason for that is because the chaos elementals jump the same height that you do so if you could jump out of this farm they can jump out of this farm so i recommend going at least 10 blocks up probably you don't need to go that high but that will definitely do the trick so now we need to make a volcano shape and the way this is going to work is the enemies are going to walk up the volcano and then they're just going to jump down into this area which will have a single bucket of lava do not do any more lava than that one lava is enough to damage enemies without destroying things like money and if you go any deeper with the lava you will lose out on money essentially and it could be a pain in the butt <laughs> <laughs> so this is the death chamber for the uh the farm and we're just going to build kind of a volcano shape right here so i'll just go like this and build down now assuming that you've already defeated a mech which you're going to need uh teleporters for this design to farm anyway so you should have killed at least one mech by now it could be very handy for you to use conveyor belts at this part and the conveyor belts could just work their way up the edges of the volcano like this and the reason for this is we're going to be using some summons to kind of tag the enemies and get them to drop more money and also get us some banners and stuff while we're afk and sometimes the summons can kill enemies outside of this death chamber and if we use conveyor belts along the floor of the farm like this, then it will carry those drops towards us at the AFK spot. So something drops, it gets carried along, it just falls in here, and we'll be able to pick it up. And now we have the volcano shape on both sides and platforms going all the way to the edge of the room. So that once we are in this AFK spot, the only blocks that any enemies can spawn on top of are to the left and the right this is too far down now if you wanted to be safe and not get any spawning here you could just fill this area in a little bit with lava and that will prevent any enemies from spawning down here just in case you didn't build it quite low enough that could be an extremely simple fix to that problem but you'll see here if i get into the afk spot and since i'm in journey mode right now we could just go in here and turn on some enemy spawns real quick we should only be getting enemies on the upper half. We'll get bats and things. Those spawn on top of the blocks, not below the blocks. So we won't get any bats or anything down here. Now, obviously, we need to get hollow enemies. And the way we do that is with hollow blocks. I'm going to be using pearl stone blocks. 
and you only need about 240 of them I believe and we're just going to fill these in these two cubbies right here you can put them anywhere uh, within this farming area I recommend putting them below the farm instead of above the farm but if you do that make sure you have no space above them so for example if I were to take this pearl stone and if I were to do this with it enemies could spawn on top of it so you want to make sure that it's right up against the bottom of the farm so that enemies cannot spawn on top once you've placed down your 200 pearl stone you will have a halo biome don't worry if the background doesn't look very crystally if you want to double check that you're actually in a cavern halo just throw down a little bit of water and you can see that very bright purple color that's how you know for sure now we do need to have the enemy spawning on top of pearl stone so over here at the edge of the farm where the conveyor belt cuts off I'm going to fill in this area with pearlstone blocks and what this is going to do is give a space for some of the specific hello enemies including the chaos elementals to spawn they will only spawn on top of pearlstone so we need that block there and we're going to do the same thing on both sides now this next part i've heard mixed results about it i've tested it both ways i don't really see a difference but some people swear by it, and that's adding additional platforms for enemies to spawn on. I don't see a huge difference, but some people say this is the only way to go. However, the reason why I do this in my own farm is I have layers of pearlstone, layers of marble, layers of granite, and we can get a whole bunch of different types of enemies spawning. But if you're after the Rod of Discord, just do pearlstone you could try out multiple layers of platforms if you want to i don't think it's necessary though unless you're trying to get multiple different types of enemy spawning now that we have an area for hello enemies to spawn we are going to need to wake up any mimics that spawn in this area that's going to be both normal mimics and hello mimics and the reason we have to wake them up is eventually they will just build up more and more and more of them never coming towards the kill zone on their own and eventually they will hurt your spawn rates drastically so the easiest way to wake them up is just by getting a dart trap and we're going to place one on either side and we're just going to put it right inside of this block right here and that's going to shoot a dart if it hits any mimics the mimics wake up and they automatically aggro towards you who is in this afk spot the normal mimics will end up jumping around in this lava and slow slowly dying the hallowed mimics are going to be a bit different because they can fly through blocks but i will get to the solution for that in just a little bit first we want to wire up these darts and the best way to do that is to just have a timer and we could do maybe a quarter second timer, put it somewhere beneath the farm or inside of the farm. We could do right here. Just get rid of that block, put that in there, and just wire those darts up. Just be sure to not cross with the conveyor belts because that will cause issues by making the conveyor belts move left and right. So now we have a farm that will spawn hello enemies and use these darts to wake up the mimics. But we will have... As I said, Hallowed Mimics attacking you and Enchanted Swords. Those are going to be the biggest problem because all of the conditions required to get Chaos Elemental spawning will also allow for those two enemies to spawn as well. And the way that we're going to deal with that is actually by adding teleporters to take you away to another location. So I'm going to put a row of blocks below the AFK spot and we're going to put two teleporters on either side of it just like that. And then on the left side of the AFK chamber, we're going to do a gray pressure plate and we're going to do one on the right side as well. So the idea here is that you're going to be AFK right here in the middle and you're going to be jumping up and down. And that's what's going to be getting the chaos elementals to spawn your movement you have to be moving for them to spawn and then if a hallowed mimic hits you it's going to knock you off to the side or it's going to knock you off to the other side and teleport you away same thing with the enchanted sword if either of those enemies that go through blocks hit you 
you're going to take knockback and fly to the other side. Of course, this means you cannot be wearing a cobalt shield and you cannot be wearing an onk shield. You have to be able to take knockback for this to work. So pressure plate on either side. And now we just need to place teleporters in a safe location very far away from this farm. Now this is going to be key. If you just teleport a short distance and back, the enemies will not despawn. We have to go far away. And once you are sufficiently far enough away, you're going to build a very specific box. Now this is going to be utilizing hoiks a little bit. If you don't know what a hoik is, it's kind of a bug in Terraria where if you walk into a solid block that's been sloped a certain way, it's going to push you along. Now this is technically a bug, but Relogic is kind of owned it as uh, a feature of the game. They don't plan on changing it. So we're going to utilize this so that we only need one teleporter for this AFK spot. So the way this is going to work is we have two teleporters here and one's off to the left, one's off to the right, and you are standing directly in between. If you hit the pressure plate, it's going to teleport you to this spot over here. And we're going to have a teleporter, let's say, right here. So now you'll see if we hit this, we teleport into this spot right here. Now we need to make sure that we teleport into these blocks, which is possible, believe it or not. And in order to do that, we just need to make sure this area is completely boxed in like this. Because you saw that I teleported into here and it kind of pushed me up on top of it like I was standing like this. If this had a roof over it, it would try to push me up. I wouldn't be able to, I'd have nowhere to go, and it spit me out to the right. And this is precisely what we want it to do. And we're going to just put two rows of blocks here. It's important to have two rows because you're going to be standing inside of this one right here. So now when I go through the teleporter, it's gonna push me up to the side. I'm gonna be standing inside this block and I'll explain why that's important in just a second. So we're in our AFK spot, a hallowed mimic comes in, hits us off to the right, and we get teleported into this spot right here. Now you could see that I'm standing on the very right edge of this teleporter. And the reason why this is important is because this is going to bring us back to the farm and it's going to teleport me in relation to this teleporter to the exact same spot. From this tile, I'm gonna be one to the right and two up, and it's gonna place me there precisely. And that's gonna be how we get back to the AFK spot in the dead center. If we link it up to the left teleporter for our return trip, you'll see it'll be one to the left and two up. And we're gonna be standing right in the AFK spot, exactly where we need to be. So if I hook up this return with another color, we'll just do yellow for this one. Uh, just make sure that you don't accidentally do what I did there and you don't cross these wires. So I'm going to need to cut that yellow wire and lift it up slightly so that way we could actually go to the right. It'll teleport us in here. Once we teleport back, back in that AFK spot. Get hit to the left, teleport back, back in the AFK spot. Hit to the right, teleport back, and you guys get the point. Now that we have a way of getting to the despawn area, we need a way of getting back to the AFK farm automatically, otherwise it wouldn't be an AFK farm. So the easiest way to do that is with a pressure plate, a weighted pressure plate at the bottom right here. I'm using a cyan one, you can use any color that you want. Now whenever we get teleported into here and pressed to the right, we are going to compress this pressure plate and we need that to turn on a 5 second timer. So we're going to place a 5 second timer, hook up the weighted pressure plate to that timer, and whenever we're in here, that will turn on. Whenever we're not, the timer will be off. Now we need this timer to activate this teleporter and the teleporter on the left. So I'm gonna go hook that up. And the reason why we can't just use the yellow wire that we already have hooking up those two teleporters is because that yellow wire 
also intercedes with the pressure plate that's right over here. So you see this pressure plate here, that yellow wire goes through that. And if I were to hook that up to the timer, anytime that pressure plate got hit, it would turn on the timer. It would really mess things up. So we need this blue wire to go to the left teleporter without touching either of these pressure plates. So now whenever we hop in here, if we were to take damage, get teleported away, we're on this pressure plate, which turns on this timer. Five seconds later, we get sent back. If we get hit the opposite direction, you can see once again, the timer is back on. And five seconds later, we get sent back. And that is basically how we're going to keep from dying in this AFK farm. But there is one massive problem, and that's with the Hallowed Mimics. The Hallowed Crimson and Corruption Mimics are unique enemies in a strange way. You can see here that they actually have collision with blocks. So if it were to fly up here, it can't fly through that wall. It stands on that block and it's right in there. It's, it's colliding like a normal enemy. But after a while, it decides that it's going to start flying through blocks. And these are the two key phases of a hallowed mimic or the other mimics but in this case we're looking at hallow and the reason why this is important is when it's flying through blocks it's a danger to you it can hit you but when it lands just like this it can be teleported that is extremely dangerous you can see how this hallowed mimic can land in the chamber with me and if it were to do that right as i take a hit it will be teleported to the despawn area with me, killing me in that area. Now, we could prevent the Hallowed Mimic from actually spawning in there by adding a few blocks. Or the Mimic will never be able to land in an area if it doesn't have a 3x3 area to land in. So by adding a few extra blocks, that we will be standing inside of, the Mimic can fly through it and hit us, but it will not be in its block collision phase and it will never be teleported. We're going to place a block in that corner, a block in that corner, and we are also going to place four blocks right here. These blocks on the left and the right absolutely need to be sloped that so that way you could still walk to the left and the right far enough to hit the pressure plate but all of these blocks here are going to prevent the mimic from landing now the biggest issue of course is getting into these four blocks but that's pretty simple too all we need to do is have a way into the farm there's two well, I guess three simple ways to do that. You could either get rid of the lava every time, use actuators, hop inside, pull a lever to reactivate the blocks and then place lava. It's time consuming, but it works. If you know how to use hoiks, you can force yourself to hoik in uh, from the bottom of the farm. That's kind of what I do in Terracore. Or we could just hook up one of the teleporters to a safe location. So I'm just going to build a spawn location teleporter and that's how we're going to get into the farm. So now we have this small little teleporter hub leading to the very left teleporter in the AFK station with this green wire. And now you'll see if we teleport into here, it's going to place us in the farm. Now you could also see that I'm placed on top of the button and I'm not fully in the blocks in the AFK spot that we need to be. So for that reason, I recommend a small adjustment to the entry teleporter. Since this teleporter links up to the one on the, the left side of the farm, I recommend putting three blocks here. So that way, if you approach it from the right, you collide with this and it's going to teleport you right into the AFK spot. Now, obviously, if you were to approach that from the left, it's going to place you somewhere that you don't want to be. Um, it's going to place you off to the left over here. So you can only use that top teleporter from the right side when activating or accessing the left teleporter. If you were to hook it up to the right teleporter, you'd want to activate that teleporter up to at the top from the left, if that makes any sense. I hope that does. So with that, it's gonna put us inside of these blocks and we can move around, you can see, and we get sent into the uh, 
despawn area. Five seconds later, we get sent back. We're still inside of these blocks. Since they're solid blocks, the mimic will never land and never be teleported with us, but we could still move left and right via knockback and we can be sent away safely. So this is now mimic proof and we have to focus on how to survive those heavy hits because this will work in master mode, but if you are playing in master mode, things are going to hurt a lot. So to help ensure that you survive those hits, there are a few things that we could do. We're gonna add a small extra layer of platform over here to the side. Now this is gonna be three tall because it's gonna be having a statue in it. So make sure it's nowhere near these teleporters. So that way a mimic that could land on here will not be teleported. Uh, but on top of that, we're going to be placing a Bast statue, which will increase your, your uh, defense. We're going to place a campfire, which will increase your passive health regen. A heart lantern, which will also increase your health regen. We're going to place some buckets of honey inside of the AFK spot so that you are also getting some honey regen while you're in there. We are going to get rid of the lava temporarily. And inside of this chamber, we're going to place three heart statues and wire those up to this quarter second timer. So that's going to be this red wire right here. We'll just do it like that. And then we could place the one bucket of lava back. And now whenever this is on, those will spit out hearts every few seconds once the cooldown is done. And so these are some great ways to increase your survivability. If you're still having a hard time surviving, I recommend early on getting the Palladium set with the melee defense mask because this will increase your life regen whenever you cause damage. But another thing that we could do is head over to the despawn area. And in this spot, you will have five crucial seconds to get some life back. So we could do the same thing over here. A pool of honey so that while you're in here, you're getting some life regen. We could do three heart statues on top of this area. And we're going to just hook those straight up to this pressure plate right here. So with this red wire, just come across. So that way, whenever you hit that, they spawn hearts and spit three hearts at you. Um, we could also add the campfire, the Bast statue, and the heart lantern for more regen. So that way, when you teleport into here, you're already getting a lot of life back in the five seconds it takes for you to get sent back into the AFK farm. That is probably the best way to survive you could also get uh, trinkets or accessories to help. So the band of regeneration will help. Anything with warding on it will help. Stuff like that. And essentially, this is all that you need for the farm. Now, now there are two accessories that will be absolutely mandatory for this farm to work, however. While you are in the AFK farm, you're going to be killing a lot of enemies with your summons. So these will drop money sometimes and the conveyor belts do pick them up and carry them towards you, but it takes a while. And if you have bad luck and bad timing, an enchanted sword could swoop in, pick up the coin, and if it's a gold coin or greater, that will not despawn when you teleport to the despawn area. So when you come back, the enchanted sword will be there waiting for you and it's very likely that it could just kill you after four or five teleports back and forth. So we need to make sure that the enchanted swords can never pick up a coin. And the best way to do that is fighting the pirates and getting a gold ring. I, I would say this is absolutely mandatory. Otherwise, the chances that you will die in the farm go up pretty significantly but you'll see as soon as we put this ring on that gold coin just gets sucked right into our inventory from quite a distance away and it does combine with the treasure magnet so if you have both of those accessories on there's pretty much no chance that an enchanted sword will ever pick up a gold or platinum coin and you will not have to worry about it ever despawning they'll despawn every time the other accessory that is mandatory is the frog leg 
For Chaos Elementals to spawn, you need to be in motion. You could be swinging a weapon, you could be walking left and right like I do in my AFK farm, or you could just be jumping indefinitely. So if we take off our wings and we just, oops, if we just hold down the space bar, we jump automatically. All you need to do is put some frog legs on and then place a weight down on your space bar. And while that space bar is weighted down, you will just be automatically jumping inside of the farm so if we take these accessories and we head on into the farm remember remember i have to enter this one from the right side of that teleporter and i just hold down the space bar i'm going to continuously jump now if i turn on my spawns once again we should be getting some hallowed enemies we're going to quick it up to times 10 I'm gonna be jumping around and we should even see Chaos Elementals make their way in. There we go, first Chaos Elemental already, second one, third one. This farm is very, very efficient. So we're just gonna be sitting in here until we take a hit and I'll need to disable my God mode for this test. So we're gonna sit in here until a Mimic or an Enchanted Sword show up. We'll take a hit and make sure that we get teleported away. And there we go. That Hallowed Mimics went straight in for us, instantly teleported away, and we're back into the farm. Now, I might not have made that AFK spot quite far enough away. As you saw, those enemies didn't quite despawn. So if that's the case, you just need to go a bit further. It's going to be a bit of trial and error with that. Otherwise, you're going to be going back and forth like I am with this. That Mimic is still alive. So actually, I do have to make this quite a bit further away in order for that to work. Okay, so I had stopped moving further to the right because I didn't want to deal with the sand and the desert, but obviously I made a bad judgment call on the distance of that AFK spot. So that really highlights the importance of trial and error. You might need to test out that you are teleporting far enough away to despawn all the enemies first, but I should be far enough away. So if I just walk off to the right now, we go into this despawn chamber, just ignore that guy you wouldn't ideally despawn into a desert right and have a spawn rate times 10 so that wouldn't happen to you in a normal situation but you can see all of those enemies had despawned except for the ones that managed to pick up coins not a big deal because those guys were already in lava so there we go everything is properly despawning now so if we were to get a hallowed mimic it would hit us we'd move off to the side and then we'd get teleported back five seconds later. Again, just ignore the desert enemies. I highly recommend it. do not build your AFK spot or the uh, despawn spot in the desert for that reason. I just did it because that's the direction I picked for this example. But now this is a fully functional farm. All I have to do is put a weight down on my space bar and then this farm will run automatically. Now, there are a few things that we could do to increase the efficiency other than being in journey mode with times 10 spawn rate. Obviously, that's not going to be realistic for anybody, right? But there are a few things that we can do to help make this a little bit better. If you're able to, I would farm out the upgrades for the greedy ring. Now, obviously, the coin pickup range is going to be mandatory for this. But if you can upgrade it to a greeting a greedy ring hitting enemies will sometimes drop extra coins and that's really going to come into play if you use a set of summoner gear early game spider gear is extremely easy to get and then i highly recommend the blade staff from the queen slime and then you could just spawn a bunch of these guys and if you're wearing the greedy ring they don't do a whole lot of damage but they hit frequently and every time they hit they cause enemies to occasionally drop extra coins, which makes this farm way more efficient. Other things that we could do to increase the efficiency of the farm is to place a garden gnome somewhere within the area and to place a hallowed torch. Since we're within the hallowed biome, we will get increased luck by using a hallowed torch. So if we were to go down here, place a hallowed torch here and place a garden gnome there we've increased our luck and that will increase our chances of getting the rod of discord another thing that i highly recommend is placing down a water candle 
This is something that you find within the dungeon, and as long as it's turned on, it will increase the spawn rate of enemies nearby. A couple of other things that you could do before you start an AFK session is to drink a battle potion, drink a luck potion. Those can help greatly as well. Now this farm is so efficient that it will probably fill up your chests in only about maybe two hours worth of time, even if you have a void bag. It could fill up pretty quick, maybe only even an hour. So if you don't have an auto clicker that's quick stacking to nearby chests like I do on Terracore, you might need to check back at this AFK farm every hour or so just to make sure that you're refreshing your inventory. Otherwise, rods of discords could potentially drop and then despawn on the floor. So you need to keep that in mind. This is a very, very efficient farm. And it's possible if you let your inventory fill up and you're not keeping an eye on it, that you could just get a rod of dis uh, discord despawning. So again, once you're in here, you just turn on that timer. You wait down on this space bar. Let the blades go to work. They're going to get you a bunch of banners, a bunch of extra money. If the banners are filling up your inventory, don't use the blades. That's okay too. Now, this guy's going to come in here. Uh, the blades might prevent him from hitting me, but probably not. I forgot to turn off god mode, so let me go ahead and fix that for you. There we go. God mode's off. He hits us. We get teleported away. We took a decent amount of damage, but we got three hearts immediately. We're in honey. We came back, get three hearts immediately, and we're almost at full health by the time the next enemy spawns. There we go. Already full health before another enemy can even touch us again. There is a slight chance that... An enchanted sword could come in here and juggle you straight in the center without you hitting the button but it's like a one in a million chance so you might come back from your afk session dead once in a while i've only had it happen once in like 40 to 50 hours of afk farming so that shouldn't be a problem to you and all of this is working as it should at this point if you want to check out the farm for yourself in person, there will be a link to the download in the description below. It's uh, available on the Steam Workshop, and you can see how this farm works in person. It might give you a better idea as well. So be sure to check that out if you want to. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please help out the channel by leaving a like and a comment and subscribing if you haven't already done so. Once again, we do have plushies on sale for only about four more days. If you guys have any questions uh, about this farm, I'll be sure to address them. Just let me know in the comment section. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.